All right. Um, good morning, everybody. In the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and get started because I know that we only have about 20 minutes of your time today. So first, good morning. I want to thank you for taking some time out of your week to join us for our fourth day of our cyber chat series. So I'm Kelly Watson. I am the Director of Service Solutions here at Sensato, and I manage our Security Operations Center. So welcome back for those of, that have participated on the sessions we've been having all week, and welcome to any new participants that we have joining today. So again, as I mentioned, today is day four, and we are going to be discussing how to help you respond when you get a threat alert. So. Hopefully today's session of um, knowing how to respond and take action begins to tie together our chats that we had this week. So Laura kicked it off on Monday with threat alerts and understanding threat intelligence. And on day two, Chris highlighted being able to respond um, within 14 minutes and, and talked a little bit more around medical device security. And then yesterday, Denny discussed honeypot alerts and you know when those are triggered, Something's touching your network, and you need to be able to, you know, need to be able to be um, quick in your response and ready to respond. So, hopefully, the, today's session will help kind of with some of the things we've already discussed and and how you can take immediate action. So, the first thing before we kind of jump right in, I'm going to be using the term protocol throughout my talk, and um, I wanted to ensure that everyone understands what it means and. And I'm not using, I'm not referring to, you know, network or computer program or computer protocols for those that maybe are, are thinking more on the technical side. I'm thinking more on the side of like, you know, how you use protocols within a healthcare organization, like a um, heart attack protocol and people know what to do when they're triaging. So to give a little bit more insight around how we use protocols here at Sensato, um, we use these for a lot of things from incident response to case management to threat alerts. Um, and again, you know, protocols, you know, some organizations may think of these around, you know, like call these standing orders, but really what they do is they empower you to make decisions quickly and help you and your team know how to respond much faster. Um, protocols will help you minimize your mistakes because you have the tools that eliminates the mistakes from occurring in the first place and not having those mistakes will improve, you know, the outcome. And also, you know, Protocols can be as generic or as specific as you want them, but keep in mind you don't want them for every type of specific attack or situation as you really need to be able to trust your people um, that are deploying the protocols to be able to think um, and be flexible and understand that one protocol may be used in different situations. The protocols are really there to help kind of guide you. Um, and they really should kind of make, make you feel comfortable because you can memorize a protocol and so you know, okay, I need to do these five or ten things if there's a ransomware attack. Or you can, can you know, turn to a checklist and say, okay, these are the steps that I need to take. Um, and, you know, what you're doing by having protocols is, is really helping your team focus and manage. And being able to manage and focus will really stop you from feeling overwhelmed and stressed in a critical situation where you don't want to have an anxiety or crisis driven response. Um, then you would have like a degradation of performance and possibly not a good outcome. So protocols really serve a, a lot of different areas and thinking about how you can respond to alerts quickly will vastly improve your opportunity to respond to situations we see today. So the next thing I want to introduce you to is something called SecCon protocols. Um, and for maybe those that have worked with us in the past, we used to call these InfoCon, but we call them SecCon, which is your security conditions. And for those of you that um, have ever seen this, um, uh, you know, the idea around SecCon really comes from the, the, the movie called War Games, and if you're old enough to remember that, um, but basically it was where kids had broken into a computer and they had changed the DEF CON levels for the United States. So you have these five levels of readiness, and there are five DEF CON levels that the U.S. still uses today. So a level five is a low threat, so everything is normal, all the way up to DEF CON level one, where we would be in you know, nuclear state. So the point of this is, as you move from one level to the next, so if you were the US president and he says that we're moving to DEF CON level four, every military unit, be it the Coast Guard, Army, Navy, Marines, they know exactly what action that they need to take. 
So for each level, you know what to do and you can move from a one to a four or three to a two, and you can apply this to cybersecurity as well. So what the SecCon allows everybody to do is it, it gets everyone across your organization, organization um, to understand their job in the event of a cybersecurity issue. So if there's a particular alert, um, typically you're gonna need your users to do something. And similar to having, you know, we think in hospital terms and healthcare terms, similar to having a code blue in a hospital, certain teams already know what to do. You, you, you don't have to call a different department or people because there's already protocols in place to help guide you. The notifications are made and people know what to do immediately and start to take action. And security conditions allow you to do the same thing. So it's something to think about because it's a way to help get your teams organized and pre-stage things so you're ready to go and people know what to do and they can do it quickly. So, you know, thinking about it in, in a clinical world, it, it's, it's like having a crash cart. And so every, all the tools are right there for you and you know how to react. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there are five SecCon levels um, that we recommend people to use. Um, so the idea here is that you have five levels of readiness. So the SecCon level five is where everything is normal. Um, level four, there is some type of risk. Maybe you have received threat intelligence information, but there's a known risk that is more widespread. Level three, there's a specific risk against your organization, your industry, or your region. For example, if there was a specific cybersecurity attack that was maybe targeting you know, New York State or, or New York City or medical devices, but it's more specific and it's not as generic or widespread. And then level two, this is where the attack has already occurred. So you're already at your heightened level of security because something happened in your network or at your organization. And level one is where you're under active attack. So you have a lot of moving parts and you're dealing with the attack at that moment. And again, these can be, you know, something that's customized and adjusted to meet the needs specifically of your organization. These are just suggestions. And it's something, again, if you had, you know, an alternate to, you know, where you didn't want to use numbers, but you could use colors or labels. Again, you could have level five could be something that you just call as normal. Level four could be guarded. You could elevate it to be critical. So again, these levels can be adjusted to your organization. So whatever the terminology is or colors, or numbers that make sense for your organization, then you can go ahead and use that. Um, so with each SecCon level, you're also going to have um, activities for each level and everyone knows what they need to do at the different levels. So everyone's trained at each of these levels and they know all of the activities. So the point is you can pre-stage what you want to do as you move through these different levels and identify the activities for each of these levels. So for example, if you're moving your organization from a five to a four, um, because maybe there's a known phishing campaign, you can say that you're going to notify all your users that they would need to take extra caution when clicking links, or that they have to maybe call their manager before clicking on any link. Maybe moving from five to four within your organization, you've determined that you need to run a backup or determine you know, if assets are patched correctly. And then again, you can move from different levels. So say if you move from five to three, maybe you know at that level, you need to have more resources. So you have to think about having three to four people on call. Um, maybe you have to run you know, an immediate backup for all of your critical assets. Make sure that your high value targets are patched when you're moving to a level three. And, and then even you know, down to level one, where you would have to maybe block a VPN access and how you can help identify um, how can you put things in place before the attack occurs and minimize the effects of the attack? Anyway, you have to you know, really determine what these activities are, and ultimately it's up to you for you to decide what's right for your organiza organization. But it does allow you to move in and out of this state of readiness, communicate in a standard way, and pre-stage things. So if you're, you know, you're trying to create you know, automated actions, having these protocols in place really help helps you get things triage in a quick and effective manner. Now, it allows everyone to know what to do across your organization when you're at a certain level, and everybody feels confident that these activities are taking place. 
And, it, you know, start small. So it's not something that, you know, as you start to build your plan, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be something that just, you know, works for you. It could be a spreadsheet. Um, you can start with a high level plan and then begin to drill down. And, you know, you want to make sure that it's something that can be adjusted accordingly. Um, you know, I, I caution, I guess, to make sure that it's not too detail oriented where people are going to get stuck or need approvals to act. But you really want people to be able to uh, able to understand this and act and respond and do so quickly. So some of the basics to understand, because I know that I've thrown a lot at you, but some of the basics to understand um, really as you start to develop and plan for SECCON, a, a SECCON program within your organization, you want to identify the SECCON owner and who's going to manage the program. You also want to make sure that everybody is trained and understands the SECCON program that they understand what their responsibilities are. So keeping the users and management informed of changes is important. As, is, and as you develop the program, you also wanna make sure that you're testing it. Um, make sure that people know what they're doing as you move through the different levels and you know identifying if it does work or if it doesn't work. So you need to adjust accordingly. So the testing is also something that would be ongoing with the SECCON program. So another topic that hopefully you can walk away from this chat and maybe use within your organization is something that we call rapid response. And this is the methodology we use in, in our cybersecurity operations center, which is the CTOC. Um, and so when you're thinking about a fast moving attack or tactical incident response, you can apply this methodology. It's something that you can use with your current incident response plans, but this is how you know we help quickly analyze the situation and end our response within our own security operations center. So there, there's a lot on here. Um, so I'm going to try to try to break this down for you as, as best I can um, around understanding what this rapid response methodology is. So the first step is that we qualify and we're trying to determine if this is an actual incident or not. And, you know, the incident could be something that is simple as, well, not simple, but, you know, a stolen laptop or you have a ransomware attack. But you first have to determine, is this real or not? And if it is real, then we immediately move to steps two, 2A. Two and, and you'll see that we have, you know, steps 2A, B, and C, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but so when you're moving to step 2A, what you're trying to do is categorize what you're seeing. So is it ransomware, is it malware? So understanding what this is um, is essential, but most importantly, you need to understand what assets are affected. And again, you know, if you're in healthcare, once you've decided you know, that this is real, the most important thing next is to identify your assets. Um, are we talking about systems in your EMR, systems in, in you know, your operating rooms? It, you know, is human life involved? So you, un you need to understand what is involved. And once you understand the assets, we can evaluate, you know, what the attack is and what we're seeing, which helps us determine how we are going to contain. And we may not ever be able to get to full containment, but um, we do know, you know, you may not know everything about the attack, but at least you've categorized. And there's some reasons that go into containment, because if it is human life involved, you're going to need um, to get a clinical incident response team involved and others involved to understand how you are going to contain this. But the point is, you really have to think about, you know, you, you have to qualify, categorize, and at least attempt to contain. And then once you've attempted containment, um, the next step is you're going to have to determine your posture. So understanding, are you under attack? Or are you not under attack? Um, what do you need to be doing? How does this impact your organization and how you're communicating with your teams and organizations? So, you know, the SECCON that I just talked about, using these SECCON levels, is something that will help move your organization to different levels so everyone knows what protocols to use and helps with overall communication and a faster response. And the last step is reset. So being able to recover and help you prepare for another attack. So when you're finished, you're handing it over to your team that deals you know, with recovery and restoration. So let me jump back a little bit to explain steps two, A, B, and C. So if you do have larger teams or you have more resources, this is something, you know, these steps are something that you can be doing in parallel. So while you're working on categorizing, you can also have team members that are working on containing the attack and updating your posture all at the same time. 
But if you have, you know, a smaller team, maybe you only have, you know, one or two people, um, you would be doing these more on, on a waterfall where you would have to categorize the attack, then move to containment, and then move through posture. But the most significant thing is that you really want to do is, you know, make sure that you're categorizing and contained once you've identified that this is real. And if it's not a real security incident, then this is going to be treated as an issue, which is going to be handled differently without the, urg without the urgency. Um, so, you know, this is the rapid response and, and it can be, you know, it can be completed rather quickly. Um, you can move very fast and it also helps you work for, you know, it works well with multiple situations. So if you're ever faced with three or four attacks happening at once, you can qualify, categorize and contain, but it gives you one standard way that allows people to act quickly. And again, um, this isn't necessarily a protocol. Well, it's not a protocol. It's more of a methodology that you would have protocols within these steps. So one of the things you can do with this um, is you can have some exercises with your teams. So once you've embraced, um, you know, having this rapid response methodology, you can work with your teams and have certain, you know, drills or exercises. And it doesn't have to be a full-blown tabletop, but just an exercise to say, okay, you know, this is just an example. Say that you've been alerted to a possible VoIP attack. You need to move into your rapid response. And so you have to start consider what would you considering what you would be doing in your rapid response and what would you be doing for each stage. So as you move through the stages, again, you use that methodology where you're going to say you have to qualify. Is this a real attack? Yes or no? Um, you say yes, that you know, you've qualified and categorized it, that it is a VoIP attack. So chances are that this doesn't impact human life, but it can impact systems and operations. And then, you know, what do you do con to contain? Do you shut down the VoIP system? Should you take action to stop the attack? And as you move into your posture, you know, to be at SecCon level one because you're under active attack. And then as soon as you contain, the attack moves into SecCon level two and you move into recovery. So you can have these mini series to help educate your team of how to do this and, and hopefully help, you know, your response. So in summary, um, there is a lot, obviously, that you can become overwhelmed with alerts, but really having the protocols and the methodology helps minimize the impact and allows your teams to respond more quickly. Um, I do hope that this session was helpful. Um, if you do have any questions around the SecCon program or rapid response, my contact information is right here, um, and I would be happy to give you any additional information around you know, SecCon program as well as the rapid response program. And Laura, I'm not sure if we've had any questions that came in. Uh, we do not have any questions at this time. Okay. So um, coming up tomorrow to finish out your week, um, Brett Warwick will be talking to you about how well do you know your network. So hopefully everybody will join in tomorrow. But with that, I really appreciate the time that you guys gave us today. And if you do have any other general questions or anything that came up during this week's sessions, please reach out to Sensato and we would be happy to get you any information or follow up that is needed. So thank you everybody and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.